In scene six of The Glass Menagerie, Tom provides background about Jim O'Connor, the gentleman caller. He explains that in high school, where they were classmates, Jim was a clean-cut star with a memorable voice and plenty of ambition. Captain of this, president of that, lead performer in the school's light opera. He didn't live up to his lofty expectations, though. He currently works only as a clerk in the same warehouse as Tom. Still, he's genial and charismatic in his circle of coworkers. Tom says coworkers treat him more respectfully because Jim does. But Tom is useful to Jim as well, as someone who remembers his glory days in high school. Jim calls Tom Shakespeare because Tom writes poetry when work is slow. Tom knows Laura admired Jim during their high school years, but he has no idea how strongly she felt about him. And Jim has no idea that Tom even has a sister. The stage directions explain that Amanda has worked around the clock since Tom told her about the gentleman caller, making final alterations on Laura's dress before she outfits herself and makes a grand entrance in the same now yellowed gown she wore to a ball when she was a debutante some 25 years ago. After reflecting on her memories of those days filled with bows and bouquets of jonquils, she tells her daughter that their guest is Jim O'Connor. This news makes Laura physically ill, as this is the young man she had a crush on in high school, and she's self-conscious about her leg. She refuses to answer the door for Tom and Jim. Amanda mutters, why can't you and your brother be normal people? Laura obeys her mother and opens the door, then rushes to the living room to play music. The two young men read the paper and go to the fire escape to smoke while Amanda finishes preparing dinner. Jim tells Tom he's taking a public speaking course to help him become an executive in a company and tries to convince Tom to join the class. Tom replies, I'm tired of the movies and am about to move. He shows Jim his Union of Merchant Seamen card and explains he paid his dues with the money for the electric bill. He doesn't care if the lights are turned off because he'll be gone. Tom says, whenever I pick up a shoe at the warehouse, I shudder a little thinking how short life is and what I am doing. Amanda enters the room in her outdated girlish dress, embarrassing her son and astonishing Jim. Tom checks on dinner and Amanda calls Laura to the table. When she gets there, she's about to faint. So Tom helps her to the sofa where she can rest. At his mother's insistence, Tom says grace and the dinner begins. The frayed ends of the family's conflicts are not so easily hidden by a veneer of socially acceptable behavior. Unable to accept her daughter for the person she is, Amanda puts powder puffs in Laura's bra and refuses to hear any complaints. She's like a woman possessed as her dream is unfolding before her and she wants nothing to spoil it.